In this video, I want to provide you with descriptions of acids and bases. We'll be thinking of acids and basic substances in water. We will also use the Bronsted-Lowry acid and base models or definitions. Bronsted and Lowry are last names of two scientists who proposed this model for acids and bases. A Bronsted-Lowry acid is a substance that donates a hydrogen ion. Quite often a hydrogen ion is referred to as a proton. That is because if you recall back from when we studied atomic theory and isotopes, the most abundant form of hydrogen is hydrogen 1. That isotope has only one electron and one proton, no neutrons. If the electron is removed from a hydrogen 1 atom, a cation remains, a H plus ion. Well, that ion is essentially a proton only. A Bronsted-Lowry acid, therefore, in water, increases the concentration of H3O plus ions. H3O plus is often called a hydronium ion. There are two types of acids we will consider, strong acids, which are strong electrolytes, and weak acids, which are weak electrolytes. In the first example of a strong acid, we could see the H from the HCl, the acidic substance, donated to the water to produce H3O plus and Cl minus. In the second example, a weak acid, which is a weak electrolyte, water interacts with CH3COOH, which is acetic acid. Because the reaction attains equilibrium, i.e. is reversible, it is a weak electrolyte. A Bronsted-Lowry base is a substance that accepts H plus ions, or protons. In water, a basic substance increases the hydroxide ion concentration. CH3O- is an example of a strong where it accepts an H plus from the water, producing hydroxide and CH3OH. The type of strong base you will encounter in this class will be metal hydroxides, predominantly group 1 metal hydroxides, such as lithium, sodium, and potassium. Here I have sodium hydroxide as an example. Sodium hydroxide, like the other hydroxides I mentioned, are solids at room temperature. Simply by placing them in water, they dissolve 100% and increase the hydroxide ion concentration. A weak base is also a weak electrolyte. Ammonia, NH3, is a common example. Here, it accepts a H plus ion, or a proton, from the water, forming NH4 plus, which is ammonium, and hydroxide. The equilibrium arrows are indicative of a weak base, just as they are indicative of a weak acid. In the two examples of the acids, weak and strong, water, coincidentally, is acting as a Bronsted base because it accepts the proton or H plus ion from the acidic substance. Similarly, in the strong base, weak base examples, water is acting as a Bronsted acid by donating the H plus to the basic substance. Now I'd like to make the connection between acid strength and equilibrium constants. Strong acids are said to go to completion, meaning 100% of the acid molecules will ionize or donate a proton to water. So for example, HCl, if one mole of HCl was added to water, the entire one mole of molecules would react with water if one were to write an equilibrium constant expression where we would have the hydronium ion and the chloride ions in the numerator and the HCl in the denominator at so-called equilibrium completion in this case the HCl concentration would be essentially zero therefore the fraction of products over reactants would be infinitely large the same occurs with a strong base. There would be essentially zero concentration of basic substance at so-called equilibrium. 
On the other hand, weak acids and weak bases do not achieve completion. In other words, less than 100% of the acid or base molecules react with water. Therefore, a significant amount of acidic or basic substance remains at equilibrium. And a definable equilibrium constant can be calculated where the denominator is not zero. In fact, most weak acids and weak bases are highly reactant favored reactions, meaning a very small percentage of the acid or basic substance reacts with water to produce either hydronium or hydroxide. Therefore, the equilibrium constants are very small. I want to add another piece of information to the Bronsted-Lowry acid base story. There are two terms that I want you to be familiar with. One is polyprotic acids and the other is polybasic bases. If an acidic substance has more than one acidic hydrogen, meaning it has more than one hydrogen that becomes a ion, it is called polyprotic, meaning there is more than one proton being generated from the acidic substance. Common examples of polyprotic weak acids are carbonic acid, which has two acidic hydrogens, therefore two Ka's, and phosphoric acid, which has three acidic hydrogens, therefore three Ka values. You will be given information in the wording of the problem if you have an acid that is polyprotic. In the example of CH3COOH, even though there are four hydrogens in the molecule, only one of those hydrogens is acidic. Therefore, there is only one Ka associated with CH3COOH. If a strong acid is polyprotic, only the second or third hydrogens have K values. But for the problems you will encounter in this course, polyprotic acids typically apply to weak acids. Regarding bases, the word polybasic applies. And that means more than one hydroxide is generated for each basic. In the examples I showed you here, CH3O, NaOH, NH3 are all monobasic substances because they generate one hydroxide for each formula unit. Calcium hydroxide and barium hydroxide are good examples of polybasic substances. They are in fact dibasic because they generate two hydroxides for each formula unit.